The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall, and fasten your seatbelt for a breathtaking journey into the vast, mysterious, hidden recesses of your own imagination. Men who have a reputation for telling the truth are universally respected and admired. But on closer examination, you're apt to discover that they have been showered with accolades after they died. What the habitual truth-teller is usually showered with during his lifetime is most often abuse. And it's understandable. In many cases, to tell the truth is to rock the boat. And why do that? Especially when the boat is warm and dry, while the water is cold and wet. Elwood? Elwood, you come out here. You, uh... You want me, George? What are you trying to pull? I don't understand. You refuse to sign a safety certificate for the cable car. Why? Because... Because it isn't safe. That's a lie. I have a job to do. You know the investment we have here? I'm sorry, George. It runs into millions. I said I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're not. You're not nearly as sorry as you're going to be. <laughs> mystery drama, A Preview of Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Russell Horton. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Excuse me, sir, but do you know what happens this time of year? Right on, pal. I happen to know that right about now, a freak blizzard falls on Dumont, New Jersey. (laughs) And they're snowed in for the rest of the summer. Uh, Happens every year. No, 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 no. Uh, You see, what happens this time of year is that you can get a particularly good deal on what is perhaps the most luxurious midsize car on the market. The midsize Buick Century Regal. Well, what good's a car when you're hopelessly snowed in? Uh, well, that's a point. Once upon a time, there came to pass a new law, and great changes came over the people. They were happy and busy themselves at work they enjoyed. They were kind to the earth, and it gave back to them. No one had to lock doors or put fences around their land. Everyone had enough to eat. The sick and the aged were cared for. The people stood proud and tall. In the land of make-believe, there were no poor. The Campaign for Human Development is working to make the same thing happen in our real world. Campaign for Human Development, United States Catholic Conference. Listen to how America handles a headache. Me? I take Bayer Aspirin. It's gentle, and it gives me all the relief I need. Bayer Aspirin. It works, and it works fast. For headache relief, I take Bayer. Bayer Aspirin. Always have. Yes, sir. More people use Bayer Aspirin to relieve a headache than any other pain reliever. Bayer. It's number one. It's how America handles a headache. Use only as directed. Bayer Aspirin. It works, and it's a name I can trust. This is KRLD News Director Dick Wheeler. Believability is the key to effective news reporting, and no broadcast news organization in Texas is more believed than KRLD News. Number one in audience ratings, number one in journalism awards, number one in believability, number one in now reporting. That's KRLD News, believed and respected by more people than any other radio station in the Southwest. You can believe Public service of this station and the Advertising Council. Fantasy has become a most saleable item. And you can buy just about any fantasy you want. There are places that create the illusion of tropical jungles, complete with roaming animals. You can roam through realistic replicas of the past and relive the lives of earlier Americans. There are enchanted presentations of the magic world of fairy tales. And we are about to regale you with Helvetia. Helvetia, high in the Rocky Mountains, 
is a faithful reproduction of a tiny Swiss village. The young ladies who work there look like Heidi. The men know how to yodel. And there are chalets and cheeses and wonderful skiing. Indeed, everything you would expect to find in a Swiss resort. There is even a cable car suspended high above the valley. And we are about to get on board. Okay, okay, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Uh, now, you don't have to worry about your baggage or your skis. Everything will be taken off the bus and delivered to your chalet. And once we get you transported to Helvetia, the cable car will come back for your things. All right, now step aboard, please. Oh, no. oh, folks, folks, you don't want to be late for dinner. This way, please. All right, there's a seat for everyone. Just step inside. Now, madam, you're really going to enjoy this. Once you tried it, you'll never be able to get enough. <laughs> oh, Jerry, is this it? Twelve? Okay, button her up. Okay, folks, we're on. Oh, and now, folks, welcome to Helvetia, a magic Swiss village in the good old USA. Those of you on the left side of the car can see fantastic Helvetia nestling in the valley just at the foot of that great peak which we call William Tell Mountain. Now this cable car is the only means of entering or leaving. We will travel for approximately one mile and a half suspended above the ground. And we are now at our greatest altitude. 7,436 feet. Now, I am often asked, what would we do if the cable breaks? I don't know what you would do, folks, but I'd scream. <laughs> but, uh, seriously, folks, there is absolutely no chance of that cable breaking or of any other kind of accident whatsoever. Why, this cable car is a triumph of modern science. In Helvetia, safe and sound. Oh, All right, thank you, folks. Step lively now, you'll miss dinner. <laughs> Hello, Duke. What do you say, Elwood? Going back? Right now. Glad I caught you. Why, uh, you leaving town? No, it's uh, time to inspect the car. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so throw her into gear, let's go. Well, you, you don't have to go. Here, let me take the card from behind the glass, and you can just initial it. Well, I'll initial it after the inspection, huh? Uh, look, Elwood, uh, but you're new on the job. That's why I want to do it right. Yeah, well, old man Farrow, he's been a county engineer since maybe the year one. Uh, before he got pensioned off, he just used to initial the card every month. He did? Yeah, after all. What could be wrong with the car? Well, that's why the law requires a periodic inspection to find out. Okay, Elwood. Be my guest. Uh, uh, do you, you, you notice an increase in vibration? No. She be the same as always. It just seems to me that... Well, I ought to know. I ride her all the time. Well, we'll see. Elwood... Elwood, are you even trying to suggest that maybe there could be something wrong? It's possible. Why? What'd you say? You asked me, I told you. Yeah, but... Well, what could be wrong? We're forever checking on the car, the cable, the machinery. I, I mean, you name it, we do it. This car, it's our bread and butter. No, it has nothing to do with the car or the cable or the machinery. Uh, what can you be talking about? The mountain. The mountain? What do you mean, the mountain? How can something be wrong with the mountain? Hi, Elwood. Had your dinner? Sure. 
What a mob. We're completely sold out. <laughs> Business is good. Oh, I tell you, Albert, we none of us ever dreamed we could make such a go of this place. Look at this stack of reservations. Where are we going to put all these people? You, you going to spend the night, Albert? If it's convenient. Well, how could it be inconvenient? Well, I do have to be at Sadler's Falls before noon tomorrow. Oh, George isn't here. He's in Denver on business. But he's taking the first plane out. He'll want to see you first thing. All right. I hope you don't mind me coming up to your room. <laughs> Seems like old times. After all, when I was little, the day couldn't officially end until Big Sister came up to say goodnight. Well, it's the only quiet place in the hotel. <laughs> I have to work on these reservations. You, uh, you want me to help you? Yeah, grab a handful. And you separate them into single girls, single guys, couples, families. Sure. Oh, uh, Elwood. Uh, George said to make sure you wouldn't leave till he speaks to you. Okay. We, uh, well, he had a phone call from Duke, and, uh, Duke was very upset. Yeah, yeah, I know. What's it about? You know, the, the inspection certificate on the cable car. Oh? Yeah, I have to sign it. So? I, uh, I inspected the car today, and I, I, I didn't sign it. You didn't? I couldn't. But if there's something wrong with the car, we can get it fixed. No, it can't be fixed. Let me get this straight. Are you telling me that you won't sign that inspection certificate know-how? I, uh... Yes, I, I guess I am. Oh, well, then that means we won't be able to use the cable car? Yes. But uh, how are people going to get in and out of Helvetia? I, I understand the problem. No, but Elwood, the... I'm afraid you don't understand. George and I and the other people, we, we've we sunk every nickel we had in the world in here. And, and the work, oh, Lord, the, the toil, the sweat, and yes, the blood that went into making this place. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have said that. Muriel, I, I know what this place means to you and to everybody. I, I spoke out of turn. You you are, after all, a, an official of the government. I'm just a county engineer. Well, you have a duty to perform. You swore an oath, and there shouldn't be any other considerations. Muriel, I don't know what to do. I mean it. I, I just don't know what to do. He's crazy, that boy. He's out of his mind. Please, George. I went ahead and got him that job. George. Well, I did. I went and put in a word for him. Without me... That's he's... true, but... But what? Well, you talk as if he's working for you. Well, he is. He's working for me, for Helvetia. No, he's working for the county. Well, by God, what's the county? Helvetia's the county. What else has the county got? What else is worth a damn in the county? Muriel, we have to have that cable car. There's no two ways about it. We've got to have that cable car. All right, George. Maybe we will. Uh, after all... Uh... After all what? Well, he really hasn't made up his mind yet. Well, what's there to think about? His job, his duty, his oath of office. Oh, come on, Muriel. Don't hand me that. Well, if, if, if the car were dangerous, would would you want him to, to okay it? Now, what kind of a question is that? I think it's a legitimate question. It's a stupid question. Why? Well, because it's... It's impossible for something to be wrong with that car, with the apparatus, with any detail of the operation. Why? Well, you know how we worry over it, as if it were a watch. Now, where is he? Well, he'll be down any minute. He didn't get much sleep all night. I know he's been worried. Well, he doesn't have to be worried about anything. All he has to do is use his common sense. Josh, don't say any more. Oh, I hadn't even begun yet. Has this boy forgotten what he owes me? For you? Us? That's not the issue. No? Well, who raised the boy? You did. Who sent him to college? I did. I didn't make an engineer out of him so that he could come back here and drive me out of business, did I? George, do something that doesn't always come easy to you. Just shut up. When he comes down, please don't discuss it. Don't discuss it. Well, why do you think I got on a plane five o'clock this morning to get here? Well, don't tell him how much you've done for him, how much he owes you. Okay. I took a course in psychology. Yeah, you never let me forget sure. it. Is this how he gets back at us? What are you saying? Do things for somebody and they resent it. Subconsciously, they develop an animosity towards you. Good morning, uh, Muriel. George. Oh, good morning. Bacon and eggs okay? Fine. Good morning, Elwood. How are tricks? Kind of busy these days. 
They want to build a road at Saddler's Forks. Yeah. The county is really getting built up. <laughs> sure is. Pour you some coffee, Elwood? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Have some cream? No, I have to lose weight. Damn it, the Elwoods. What's the big idea? George. Now, what are we sitting around for like three bumps on a log? This whole place can become a ghost town, and everybody's investment can go right down the drain just because... Because... You... Because what, George? Because some wet-behind-the-ears kid is maybe getting a little bit drunk with power. Can I tell you what's bothering just me? Just sign the damn certificate and nothing has to bother The me. mountain. The mountain across the valley where the cable is anchored, you know? On the, on the plateau where the bus delivers the people? Well, so? That mountain... Inside that mountain, there's... There's what? There's a... A fault. What do you mean, a fault? That mountain is... Well, I, I guess you could say it's slowly separating. It's coming apart. But nobody ever said... Well, it, it could be something new. It might have been caused by an underground atomic explosion. But there haven't been any of those near no, here. It doesn't matter. It could have been a thousand miles away. Well, how do you know? Well, there are signs. What kind of signs? You remember the old abandoned silver mine? Yeah. yeah. Well, I noticed that some of the buildings and shafts are sinking into the ground. Yeah, but that's on the other side of the mountain. In a direct line. You've got other geological signs. Yeah, but the foundation for the cable, that's like the rock of Gibraltar. George, I, I've measured the angle of declension of the cable. It's been widening. Huh? By how much? Well, a minute fraction, but that doesn't matter. It's proof. That there is a separation. Well, how fast? Maybe a fraction of an inch a year. <laughs> so, a million years from now, we can worry about it. Now, that doesn't mean the rate can't increase rapidly without warning. I mean, it could last a hundred years or forever. Or it could go tomorrow morning. It could just come apart. Collapse. Well, all right. Never mind all that. Just tell us flat out. What are you going to do? What is he going to do? He appears to be a dedicated public servant. On the other hand, he is a human being with intense personal debts and loyalties. He's thinking about it. And he'll have an answer when I return shortly with Act Two. Ever see a beer drinker pour his beer real easy down the side of the glass? Maybe you do it yourself. If so, the Budweiser Brewmaster thinks you're missing something, especially if you're a Budweiser drinker. You see, Bud is brewed, so it will kick up a healthy head of foam. Exclusive beechwood aging and natural carbonation make it a lively brew. Well, anyway, pouring Bud plunk down the middle of the glass helps bring out the best in that clean white Budweiser foam and real beer aroma. It also helps you get the full benefit of a taste, smoothness, and drinkability you'll find in no other beer at any price. Remember, brewing beer right does make a difference. Next time, pour that Budweiser right down the middle and see for yourself. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Occasional acid indigestion and heartburn can be more than just acid alone. Often there's trapped gas, too. That's what we call gasid indigestion. Digel is made for gasid indigestion because Digel is different. It does more. Digel reduces excess acid while its patented cymethicone gets rid of trapped gas fast. Use only as directed. Digel for gasid indigestion. No plain ad acid can do what Digel can. Denture wearers, here's a thermoplastic denture adhesive which hot or cold liquids can't dissolve. It's Cushion Grip. One application of Cushion Grip creates a comfort cushion seal that holds dentures securely up to four days. No more need to apply messy powders, paste, or creams two or three times daily. You can brush and soak dentures again and again, yet Cushion Grip stays on up to four days. For greater comfort and security, change to Cushion Grip. Markham. You owe everything you have in the world, your life, your education, your job, to your older sister and her husband. 
as a public official, you must certify or condemn conveyances that transport people. There is a conveyance that serves as the foundation of your sister's business. You cannot, in good conscience, certify it as safe. If this concerned strangers, you wouldn't hesitate. However, it's your sister. Are you going to destroy her? What would you do if I refused to sign it? Go to the county supervisor. Enter a protest. Ask for outside experts. Hire a team of geologists. It wouldn't help. Word would get out. Whichever way it went, the publicity would kill us. I, I, I... Look, George and I are going to leave you, Elwood. Everything's already been said. You just have to decide as you see it. Come on, George. But I... George! <sighs> yeah. What was I supposed to do? I walked to the window. Outside was an enchanted street. It was as if... As if you were in another world. Another country thousands of miles away. And all this was their handiwork. Of course, the cable car was unsafe, but it was only unsafe in theory. In practice, it could serve a hundred years without a mishap. The odds of this cable car falling were perhaps about those of a plane crashing, a ship sinking. Certainly less than that of a car colliding. So, I knew I was going to sign that certificate. But I also knew I was being bribed. It was a subtle bribe, but bribery nevertheless. I was being bribed with their love, their companionship. Because after all, if I refused to sign, things would never really be the same between us again. Hey there, Edward. Morning, Duke. I got a call from the chalet to hold the car for you. Leaving? Yeah. All right, hop in. We're off. How, uh, how come you're not afraid to ride this baby? Well, why should I be afraid? It's perfectly safe. Is it? Yeah. Matter of fact, before I forget, let me have the card. I better sign it. Well, yesterday afternoon, you were handing me yeah, this line. No, and... no, the situation adjusted itself. feel alone. Oh, hello. My cab dropped me off here about 20 minutes ago. When does that cable car show up? Oh, uh, should be along any minute now. Are you going to Helvetia? No, no, I have a package I want to have delivered to my brother-in-law at the chalet. Well, I understand it's a fabulous place. I was lucky to get a reservation. <laughs> I'm sure you'll enjoy it. You know, you look familiar. I was about to, uh, say that about you, too. My name... My name is Daphne. Daphne Aldershot. Daphne Aldershot. <laughs> That's kind of a wild name. Well, what's yours? Elwood. Elwood Markham. Hmm. That's a very sober, serious kind of name. Um, maybe it's because <laughs> I'm a very sober, serious kind of person. Oh? What do you do? Uh, I'm an engineer. Yes. That's kind of sober and serious. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you do? I'm a librarian in Denver. Oh, you don't look like a librarian. Why? How are librarians supposed to look? Oh, prim, mousy. <laughs> you really should get with it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Am I going to go into that? Uh -huh. In less than five minutes, you'll be in Helvetia. Oh. Will you be staying home? Uh, ten days. Oh. Uh, maybe I'll see you. I'll be there tomorrow afternoon. Uh, say, uh, tell Mrs. Lucas at the chalet that you're a friend of mine. Okay, all aboard. Hey, Elwood, how you doing? Can you get this package to George for me, Duke? Sure thing, Elwood. And, uh, take good care of Daphne. Oh, how you do, Daphne? She's my fiance. Congratulations, Elwood, Daphne. Elwood, darling, I'll see you very soon, won't I? You'll see me tomorrow, darling. I'll bring a preacher with me. We'll get married. <laughs> Can I be best man? <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, we're off. Goodbye, Daphne. What's, what's that? What's, what's that? The, the mountain. The, the falls. It's opening. It's, oh, it's opening. Oh, no, no, it's opening. Elwood, no. Elwood. 
You're out of it, huh? I... Oh, 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 man. You have uh, the great granddaddy of all nightmares. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we, we heard you across the hall in our room, your and I. Was it a dream? Oh, was it ever? You sure scared the daylights out of me. Daphne. Have you been uh, holding out on us, boy? Who's Daphne? Oh, I seem so real. You want Muriel to get you something to drink, maybe? No, no. Look, I was standing at the cable car platform, and, uh... And there, there, there she was. Who? Daphne. Well, that's what I mean. Who's Daphne? I, I don't know. Oh, now how could you dream about a girl you don't know? Uh, dark hair, blue eyes. Mm-hmm. I was always partial to that type myself. She was, she was, she was beautiful. It, it was so real. And and we, we stood at the platform, and I, I put her on the car, and uh, yes, yes, in the car, just, just the mountainside. It just. It, Started to, uh, to, to give way to the, the, the fault. Oh, well, Wood, it's a bad dream, that's all. Just a bad dream. Yeah. Yeah, just just, just a, a bad dream. Well, how's everything now? Oh, it was just a nightmare. Oh, how about something warm to drink? No, no, I'll, I'll be fine. What was it about, Elwood? He was dreaming about a girl. Oh, could a girl cause you that much grief? No, 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 I was, I was dreaming about the mountain. What about the mountain? Just came apart. Oh, Elwood. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No, it, it's all right. No, it isn't all right. Don't worry about it. What about the girl? I never saw her before. What's everybody getting so excited about a simple nightmare? Well, I'm going back to bed. You coming, Muriel? In a minute. Elwood, I'm worried about you. I'll be okay. You shouldn't have signed that safety certificate. Oh, come on. It's all right to be Don Quixote on the stage, but in real life... But you are Don Quixote. You always were. Uh, I can get over it. And George and me, well, Well, maybe our motives for getting you the job of county engineer weren't exactly the purest in the world. Muriel, what are you saying? Oh, maybe unconsciously we wanted to have our own man in office so we wouldn't be bothered with all the official inspections. Muriel, I won't believe that you could have such a motive. Well, as I say, it wasn't a conscious one, anyhow. It's all so complicated, isn't it? Look, next month, don't sign the certificate. No, I've already fought that battle. It's over. Well, then resign. It is over, Muriel. I, I had this crazy nightmare. I conjured up this girl out of nowhere. But why? Why did she seem so real? And that name. What name? Her name. Where would I ever hear it before? Well, I'll let you get back to sleep. Yeah. That nightmare sure knocked me out. I think I could sleep for a week. Well, you better get up early. You have to be in Denver for lunch. What? Oh, I must have forgotten to tell you. Your boss called. There's a luncheon meeting of the municipal engineers. He can't make it near to go in his place. Oh. Is it really that much of a bore? Denver. I... I wonder if... If what? If she really works in the library. Who? Now, it's crazy. What are you talking about? On the other hand... Suppose... Suppose there is such a girl. Just... Suppose... Corn, Alden, Alder, uh, Aldershot, Daphne, Daphne Aldersh. It just, it just can't be. It just can't be. Huh. But why not? Okay. Okay, so it is. But what am I going to say to her? 
Uh, is is this Daphne Aldershot? Yes. Miss Daphne Aldershot? Yes. Who are you? Are you uh, the uh, Daphne Aldershot who's who's a librarian? Yes. Mm. Who is this? Uh, uh, you uh, you don't know me. And I don't think I want to. Uh, hey, please, 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 don't don't hang up. Why not? Uh, just answer one question. Uh, have you any plans? Uh, do you expect to go to Helvetia? I have to know. Why? Look, I'm not a kook or a crank. Well, I find that hard to believe. Just, look, but please, tell me if you you plan to go to Helvetia. And suppose I do. Then what? Don't. Please. For your own good. Don't go. Well, believe it or not, there is a Daphne Aldershot. And she is a librarian. And she is coming to Helvetia. Is Elwood Markham a man who can see into the future? Well, so far, his forward vision seems to be 2020. But we can check it further when I return shortly with Act Three. Who knows how to help you solve your shopping problems? Your Better Business Bureau knows. Listen, Lou. This fellow is at the door about the home repair, you know, and he wants me to sign the contract now. What'll I do? You don't have to sign that contract now, madam. You're not Lou. Who are you? I'm the man from the Better Business Bureau with some advice to help you to protect yourself. Read all the documents before you sign and take your time. He'll come back tomorrow... And incidentally, keep a copy of any form you do sign. And be sure you understand what you're signing. Oh, thank you for telling me. No need to thank me, madam. That's what Better Business Bureaus are for. To help protect consumers like you. What do you tell a husband who comes home and says, I just don't know about a vacation this year. (laughs) Well, you tell him about Ramada Inn's family plan where your kids, 18 and under, share your room free. And you tell them about the toll-free Ramada Inn's reservation number, 800-228-2828. At least that's what I tell him. At Ramada Inn's, you're always welcome home. This is Al Whisk. Bobby Bregan of the Texas League will be our guest Wednesday night. For those of you who are longtime Texas League fans, it'll be your chance to reminisce with the president of the league and one of the game's most colorful personalities. If you're not familiar with the Texas League, you'll hear about the most historic minor league organization in baseball. Our first sports question, who was the last man to win the Triple Crown in the National League in Major League Baseball? Sports Central Dallas, this week, Baseball Week. Wednesday, Bobby Bregan, 6 to 7 on KRLD. Elwood Markham keeps having nightmares. In his nightmares, a girl he never even heard of steps into the overhead cable car that transport visitors to the enchanting resort called Helvetia. The car falls and she gets killed. But now, he has a real problem. It seems that this girl exists. And she intends to come to Helvetia. And she will have to get into that cable car. No. 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 Daphne. Daphne, darling. Daphne. Daphne. Daphne, please. Daphne. And who is Daphne? Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm having this nightmare. Oh, we could hear you all over the place. Well, I'm having it all the time now. Well, who's Daphne? The, the girl, the girl who gets killed. What? She's a, she's a girl. She's a girl named Daphne, Daphne Aldershot. Yes? Yeah, and she's, she's coming to Helvetia. And I meet her at the cable car terminal at the mountainside, and we fall in love. At... How would I know she's coming here? The Helvetia, how would I know? Well, who says... She exists. She's part of your nightmare. Now, listen, listen. Last week, I was in Denver. Remember? Yes. Yeah, her name, Daphne Aldershot. It's in the book. 
Well, all kinds of names are in the book. And, and, and I spoke to her on the phone. Now, just a minute, Elwood. Are you sure? I'm sure. I called her number. She answered. And she is coming here. The Helvetia. She said so. Well, let's check it out. Ginny, get me Greta at the reservation desk. Thanks. It is not my imagination. Greta, do we have a reservation for, um, Daphne Aldershot? She said she was planning to... to we, we do. Uh, find out when. Uh, this, um, Miss Aldershot, when is she arriving? Friday night? Find out what time. What, what time? Uh, what time? Nine o'clock. Thank you, Greta. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Don't you see? What? The, the first time I saw her in my dream, she was alone at the terminal. Now, that's because she got here late. Elwood, uh, there must be some kind of explanation. I dreamed there was a girl named Daphne Aldershot. I dreamed she was killed when the cable car fell. It turns out there is a girl named Daphne Aldershot. It happens she's coming to Helvetia. So? Uh, Elwood, it could all be... Uh... How would I know? How would I know? I mean, maybe you better, uh... Better what? See a doctor? You think I'm crazy? No, no, you're just tired. Emotionally exhausted. Tuesday, and... Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I've got four days. I have to stop her. May I help you? I, uh, I wasn't looking for a book. No? Then what are you doing in a library? I was, uh... I'm, <clears throat> I'm looking for you. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm the one who called you on the phone. Yes? Yeah, I, I tried to tell you not to go to Helvetia. Uh-huh. You're the nut. No, now, now I assure you, I am sane. <laughs> that is, I'm, I'm as sane as any normal person, which I admit isn't saying very much. Yeah, well, uh, uh, sir, I'm busy, and I just uh, don't have uh, time uh, can, to... Can, can we go somewhere and talk? I don't think so. As a matter of fact, there's a security guard over by the door. You wouldn't call him? What makes you think so? Aren't you even the least bit curious? Look, my name is Elwood Markham. I'm, I'm an engineer. I'm a county engineer over in Custer County. And, uh, look, you, you could check it out. Mm-hmm. It's 12 o'clock. You have to have lunch. I bring a sandwich. There's a place just around the corner. Now, what could happen to you? <laughs> That's just what I'm afraid of. Nothing. <laughs> You don't really want to go to Helvetia. But I do. I've been saving my money for almost two years. The place is a phony. I should know. My sister and brother-in-law, they run the biggest chalet there. And it's just, you, you know, it's imitation. Well, I hear it's fabulous. Take it from me. You won't like it. In the first place, there's about five girls every guy. Is that so? Oh, yes. It's a, it's a fact. Well, will you be there? I, uh... Daphne, uh... <laughs> You know, you are cute. I mean, you're so serious. I'm trying to tell you... <laughs> I've never you met anybody who's as serious as you. I mean, serious and a little crazy at the same time. <laughs> now, you tell me why I shouldn't go to Helvetia. Well, you will think I'm crazy. Now, wait till you hear the real reason. I'm waiting. I dreamed about you. Well, now. When? Oh, two weeks ago. But how could you? You didn't even know me. It, it, you and I met at the terminal where the cable car takes off for Helvetia. Oh, I've heard that that is the most exciting and part of the And we fell in love. Now, and... don't rush me. Wait a minute. Yeah. And, and you got on the car, and yeah. the car took off, and there was a rock slide, and the cable car broke loose, and, and, the, and, and the car fell, and... And... and? And you were killed. Oh, wow! <laughs> oh, what any good psychiatrist would make out of that. <laughs> so that's why you don't want me to go to Helvetia. Hmm? Yes. Well, I must say, but, I've but, heard but a lot Before of... <laughs> you say anything, remember what I told you about my job? What is your job? I said I was county engineer, and oh, I had yes. to inspect that car, right, for safety? Yes, well... Well, it is not safe. Oh, well, then that takes care of that. The car won't be allowed to run, and I won't be killed, and there's no problem. No, no, there, there is a problem. I, I didn't... I... Well... I okayed the car. But if it isn't safe, why did you? Because it, it's... It's so complicated, and, and safe is a, a relative situation. Daphne, please. 
Please, don't go. Don't. It's been nice meeting you, Elwood, and I would like to get to know you better. But you're just <laughs> too deep, too involved, too, I don't know. Maybe if you could get yourself straightened out... Daphne, could... you, you can't go to Helvetia Friday night. I am going to stop you. How can you stop me? Oh, excuse me, Elwood. County Engineering Office, Tracy. Yeah? I'll put Elwood on it. Right. Talk of the road being washed away. On the other side of the mountain where the cable car terminal is? How do you know? It's part of what I'm trying to tell you, Mr. Tracy. Elwood, I just can't condemn the cable car without giving the folks at Helvetia notice. But look, th this is an emergency. Two weeks ago, you certified the car as safe. Now, what's come up so sudden? It hasn't been sudden. I've known... I've known about it for months. Well, then why... Why didn't you... Well, because I... Because of Muriel and George? Yeah, it's, it's part of it. Maybe. We've lived with geological faults, Elwood. Yeah, sure, but a heavy rain, unusual amount of snow, any one of a hundred subterranean disturbances in that whole side of the mountain... Okay, gonna... okay, let's do a study. No, that will take weeks, months. It could go any time. And it could never go at all. Elwood, now here's what you have to do. Next time you inspect it, in two weeks, condemn it. Give me a full report, request an investigation, and we'll bring in the experts. And they'll only disagree among themselves and nothing will happen. Elwood, it was your job to withhold the safety certificate. I know, Mr. Tracy. Well, once again, put it in writing. By that time, it'll be too late. Too late for what? Can't anybody believe me? Hi, Elwood. Want some coffee? No, thanks. Where have you been the past few days? Uh, Muriel, do something for me. Okay. Miss, uh, Miss Daphne Aldershot. Oh? You know, she's due here tomorrow evening. And? Call her. Send her a wire, anything. T tell her you had to cancel her reservation. Why should I do that? Because, because I ask you to. Oh, I really can't do that, Elwood. You own the place. You and George, you can do anything you like. Well, not really. Miss Aldershot sent us a deposit. We confirmed a reservation. We can't just cancel her. What's to stop you? Well, first, it's unethical. Second, it's illegal. She could sue us. Let her. She could win. Let her. I won't pay the damages. You won't lose anything. Edward, please. What? What is this? I told you she is going to be killed tomorrow night. Elwood. No, no, Muriel. I, I know. I'm, I'm not talking like an engineer, like a practical, you know, down-to-earth facts and figures man. But the truth is, I... I don't know. I've had a, a vision, Muriel. Somehow, some way, I was given a glimpse into the future. How else would I know about a girl named Daphne Aldershot? Uh, well, these things are just, uh... Yes, they're just what? Wait, wait, wait a minute. You say there was no way you could ever hear of Daphne? That's right. But there is. I mean, there was. What? What are you talking about? That night... Two weeks ago, you were feeling bad about the inspection. Yeah. I came up to your room, and I happened to have a stack of reservations. You offered to help sort them out. That's where you could have seen her name. Oh, I don't remember any of those names. None of them made an impression on me. Well, not consciously, but that name, that sort of uh, unusual name, Daphne Aldershot. It's impossible. Only because you refused to admit it. And then you had a guilty conscience about uh, the inspection. And the two things spun around in your mind. No, 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 no. That couldn't happen. You wanted, you wanted to punish yourself, so you fell in love with a girl named Daphne Aldershot, only to have her die because of your neglect of duty. How would I know she's a librarian? Uh, she listed her job on the reservation. Now, now do you understand? It's all right. Everything's all right. No. No, it is not. I have to save her. <laughs> I was beginning to think I was all alone in the world. Daphne, do you realize 
that what you said when I first met you? In a dream? My cab driver dropped me off here about 20 minutes ago. When does the cable car arrive? You, uh, you decided to come after all. Elwood, what am I going to do about you? You could listen to me. Mm -mm. That's something I must never do. But otherwise, we'll get along okay. Daphne, <laughs> can't you, can't you ever be serious? I am serious. I saw you for the first time and I said, uh-oh, poor Daphne. Of all the guys. <laughs> well, I'll try to make the best of it. Oh, hey. Hey, look. Here it comes. Daphne, uh, let's, let, let's get out of here. Why? Well, haven't I been telling you why? Don't, don't you feel it? What? The, Feel the, 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 vibra the vibration, that vibration under your feet. I don't feel anything. All aboard. Hey, Elwood. Can't you hear it? Hear what? That rumbling. No, I, I don't hear anything. Duke, yeah, get out of the car. Elwood, what's fighting you? There's a slide. Well, I don't hear anything. I said get out of there. Elwood, take your hands you're, off me. Oh. Oh. Why did you hit him? Help me. Help, help, help me, help me, get him out of there. What's that? I told you. Come on, come on, let's dra drag him back. Back as far as we can go. Elwood, Elwood, we're going to get killed. No, hurry, up. hurry up. No, come on, come on, maybe, maybe we can Elwood, get back I'm far scared. enough. I'm scared, I'm scared. Come on, here's the place over here. What oh, oh. the earth is cracking over here. Before we do it, come on. Oh. Come on, come on, we can do it. Come on, Daphne. Daphne, pull yourself. Daphne, come on, Daphne, Daphne. And they did it. They just managed to scramble to safety as the piece of the mountain that held the cable anchor fell away. Happily, though, it didn't spell the end for Elwood and Daphne. It was a beginning. For Helvetia, it was a continuation. They flew the people in by helicopter. And the place is doing better than ever. Whether or not you decide to make a reservation to go there... Remember your daily reservation with us, here. I'll return shortly. Pardon me, miss. Uh-huh. Uh, can you tell me what happens this time of year? <gasps> Rhubarb reaches its peak. Nope. Uh, muskmelon reaches its peak? No, no. Oh, well, th does it in any way involve something reaching its peak? No, not really. Oh. What happens this time of year is that you can get a really outstanding deal on Buick's small but surprisingly elegant Apollo. And with what's happening to prices, you may never have a better chance to buy a Buick. Huh? Hey, I know what happens. Yeah? The buzzards come back to Hinkley Ridge, Ohio. Oh. Uh-huh. I hadn't thought of that. Spruce and maple trees give us the violin. And if we don't stop burning them down, we'll have a little less music. We'll also have a little less lumber, a little less paper... A little less rayon, a little less alcohol, a little less maple syrup, a little less printing ink, a little less turpentine. A public service charcoal. on behalf of the Forest Service, State Foresters, and the Ad Council. Can you see into the future? There are several schools of opinion. However, the best way to answer that question is to ask, what is the future? Isn't the future, after all, the fabric we weave out of the strands of the present? So, if you know all the strands, all the threads, and all the stitches, why is it impossible to foresee the design? We'll have another terrifyingly delightful design for you next time. Our cast included Russell Horton, Stats Cotsworth, Clarice Blackburn, Robert Dryden, and Marion Seldes. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. Now, what is all this about? I'm a detective. A detective? Yes, now. No one must know but you. And particularly not Amy or uh, that man she's dancing with. What danger is there? We're pretty sure that Archer Hamlin's crowd is out to get Amy for fingering the boss. Oh, no. You mean... You mean those crank calls were for real? 
And that is why I'm here. We think this might be the perfect spot for them. Why? Well, we think one of them will probably pose as a guest, get friendly with Amy, and then kill her in some way to make it look like an accident. Oh, how awful. Well, this is the perfect spot for it. With horseback riding, a lake. I, I can hardly believe it. Well, it's possible, Lois. And very probable. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>